Um, hello everyone, my name is Zamir Masjedi. I'm a solutions engineer from Shopify and I've spent a year on the developer experience team and today I want to explain the steps that we're taking to transition from a developer experience program to a developer uh, success program. And before I start, so you better understand really why we decided to make these steps and take this decision, I'm going to offer a little bit of context. So if you're not really familiar with Shopify, we're a SaaS company, a SaaS e-commerce company based out of Ottawa, Ontario. As the story goes, our founder, Toby Lutzka, came from Germany as a programmer to Canada. He didn't really know what to do, so he's like, I'm going to sell some snowboards. I like to snowboard. And throughout the process, he discovered that selling stuff online back in 2004 was pretty tough. And he tried out a bunch of different software and in true programmer fashion, realized that he didn't like any of it, so he was just going to build it himself. And in a couple months, it became evident that the software itself was a lot more valuable than the product and the business of selling snowboards. So he pivoted, and thus Shopify was born, 2006. Today, Shopify has offices all over the world, from here in Stockholm to Berlin, New York, and Melbourne. And it serves about 800,000 merchants internationally. So there's 4,000 employees at Shopify. These 800,000 merchants do have done about $100 plus billion on the platform. Um, and these numbers are continuing to grow daily. Similar to Toby, it really started off towards the small entrepreneurs, the people that wanted to be able to create a business on the side with their full-time jobs, being able to do what they love and make money from it. So companies that are selling tea or companies like mom and pop shops that have bookstores and they want to be able to take their completely offline business online. And what does that look like in the 21st century? But aside from those small businesses, some of the biggest businesses in the world today use Shopify as well. So Kylie Cosmetics, billion dollar market, sorry, billion dollar makeup industry in North America. Um, some other brands like Red Bull, Budweiser, some cool companies like SpaceX, all on Shopify. Um, I love this particular graph. This is a Google search trends of two words. That red word is e-commerce, search from 2010, which is when Shopify started gaining employees, up till today. And that blue term is actually Shopify. So there's a point of convergence there around 2014, and now we're sitting about three to four times the number of searches as e-commerce. But aside from the product, Shopify also has a large number of apps on our platform. So we try to do 80% of what merchants and e-commerce businesses need really well. That remaining 20% will leave up to our app ecosystem. So our app store today looks a little bit like this. If you're a merchant and you're trying to sell stuff online, you'll probably jump in here and you'll download a bunch of different apps to get you up to 100% of everything you need. So whether we're talking about email marketing, whether we're talking about advanced reporting, advanced analytics, typical merchant has about half a dozen apps on their store, potentially even more. And this is where our APIs come in. So today, Shopify has dozens of various endpoints. We support our APIs in both REST and in GraphQL. And we also have about half a, dozen, half a dozen different SDKs. And it became obvious that as the app community and as the partner community began to grow and more and more apps were coming onto the app store and more merchants were relying on these apps, people really need to help these developers. Because anytime there's a developer trying to build a product, they're, in, in, they're obviously going to run into some roadblocks. They're going to run into some challenges. So how do you help them to ensure that they're able to move forward with their business and get all the help and support that they need? Enter the developer support team. So this was really a lot of stumbling, as is many of the things that Shopify did in the early days as a startup. Um, we figured out there's a lot of developers that needed help. So in 2015, we decided to launch the developer support team. And it was just one person. Um, advanced a couple of years, we moved to three people. 2017, four people. And today, we're sitting at about roughly 10 people that are out there, and they're supporting all the different partners or all the different developers that are using our APIs and using all the de different developer products. So within my 12 months on the developer support team, we were supporting uh, developers in a variety of ways. And I'm going to use the term developer support, but you might have heard of it for as developer evangelist, evangelist, developer advocates, developer experience, all pretty synonymous. Um, they might have different roles within your company, or you might have heard of them doing different things, but I think the underlying mission is pretty much the same, and that's make it as easy as possible for people to consume your APIs, and make it as easy as possible for them to succeed. So in my time on the developer experience team, we're really doing three things. Um, the first thing was, how do we ensure that the resources people need to get started and consume the APIs exist? So whether that's reference documentation, whether that's example, code snippets. The second component is, when issues come up, 
when bugs come up, when you see spikes in different areas, who do the developers reach out to? Who do they talk to so they're able to get through those issues and continue developing? So dealing with problems and dealing with those issues that are inevitable. And then the second part is developers, and I think it's been mentioned before, use APIs in the funkiest of ways, right? They do things that you never expected, sometimes never hoped. And invariably, they, they come up with a lot of creative solutions and a lot of ideas. And they're very vocal about their ideas. They're like, have you tried this? This sucks. You should do it this way instead. And so the developer support team or the developer experience team was very much so a liaison between the developer community and our product teams to ensure that we're able to get our products to where they need to be to help um, bring it to the next level. And then today, we're at a team size of 10. And part of that is due to the number of growth of the apps that we have. But it's also due to the size of these developer communities and the developer partners that are using our APIs. One developer in particular that I want to talk about is called Bold. So Bold is a very interesting startup. Uh, it was three individuals, typical startup fashion, out of a garage in Winnipeg, Canada. If you haven't heard of it, that's OK. It's a very, very cold place, about minus 45 in the winter months. That's no exaggeration. But they got together and they saw an opportunity to use Shopify's APIs to build apps for merchants on the platform. And they started back in 2013, about seven years after Shopify itself launched. And today, if I were to go in our app store and I were to search for Bold, it would look a little bit like this. Um, I would see a bunch of different apps, very highly used, very highly reviewed. And they're one of the most popular uh, partners and developers on our platform. And, and this was really a start of something interesting because as our partner community grew, we saw more and more headlines that kind of looked like this. This was back in January, a couple months ago. And it was the first time that a partner, a series of developers, that were using our API actually raised a round of funding to do what it is that they wanted to do, to consume our APIs. And it was an interesting thought because it meant that these companies are no longer dealing with the issues that the developer experience team was initially built to help with, they had technical expertise. They know how to make build apps. They know how to troubleshoot. They were dealing with issues at API use at scale. The, today, Bold has about 100 different employees. Their offices originally, when it was three people, looked kind of like this. Um, today, it actually looks a lot more like this. This is one of their two offices in Winnipeg, employing over 100 people. And Bold isn't the only company that's seen this kind of growth on Shopify's platform and is using Shopify's APIs. There's actually a bunch of different partners that do so. And these partners are all suffering from the same issues, right? And during my time on the developer experience team, we dealt with a lot of these interactions through Zendesk, through email support. And some of the, some of the tickets that we got look like this. And regardless of what the headings say here, I wanted to highlight a few of the things that was mentioned in this ticket. There's no mentions of, hey, I don't know how to debug this issue, or hey, can you tell me why I'm seeing this payload? It was things that were a lot more ingrained about the business itself. So I'll read out the first part. It says, this one is actively impeding our work. If we had this API, we could automate a significant portion of our installer jobs away and improve our response time on installs. This would make our continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment pipeline process simpler. And then also, is there any way we can work around this simpler compared to your typical production shops? So we can see here the frustration of like, we understand you want us to use your APIs this way, but when we have so many different apps and so many different developers, this isn't scaling with us. And we need you, you, need, we need you to work with us so that we can continue to grow and succeed. And I left that last part in there as well. It says, if you still have time, we could hop on a call to discuss this further. Because we didn't have the infrastructure at the time to jump on a phone call and to deal with them the way that they wanted to be dealt with. It was all through email, through a partner dashboard, a lot of back and forth communication delayed by time zones, which usually isn't the best way to deal with an issue. So all of this led to what I like to call the tipping point. Um, unfortunately, on one weekend, uh, there was an API outage that took place. And one of our partners, their apps went down. This app was installed by thousands of merchants. And simply due to the nature of the app, it meant that a lot of those storefronts also went down. So a lot of these websites couldn't function. And kick it, to kick it, um, it was all on the weekend as well. So Shopify is amazing support, uh, 365 days a year, 24 hours, multiple languages, international. But that support's intended for merchants, right? It's not intended for this deep technical support that they needed in terms of what the heck's going on here. Um, so it didn't, until Monday, no one was able to resolve it and realized, hey, we can't, start we can't be treating all of our partners the same. They're not all using APIs at the same level, at the same scale. What do we do about this? 
And so we do a lot of studies as well with our partners, people that use our um, APIs. And this is one of the quotes that came out just a couple weeks ago from them. And it was said, partners are getting frustrated with a lack of answers and understanding when they report issues to support. This kind of reminded me of when I have like internet issues and I try to call tech support. And the first thing they ask me is like, have you reset the router? Um, and like, I'm sure you in the room could probably resonate with that as well. It's like, they want more than that, right? They want to know if there's anything happening on, in your servers, any downtime that I should be aware of, and they weren't able to get this. So enter developer success. We wanted to brainstorm, OK, if we can do this again, and if we can build a program that's intended for large merchants, merchants at scale, merchants that are using our APIs rigorously, rigorously what would that look like? And we were able to identify three core concepts. The first concept is solutions engineering. So let's get away from the retroactive approach of fixing problems and bugs as they come up sporadically. And let's shift focus to how do we ensure that this is going to be successful in the long term? How do we ensure that you're building apps with best practices? So taking more of a consultative role with your partners, because I think it was mentioned in a talk today, there's probably five ways to paginate on Slack. All five of those ways are not equally effective. Shopify, we have two ways to paginate. You could paginate using a query-based parameter, or you could paginate using cursor-based pagination. Um, we, we did a study, um, and we got one of our partners to move from cursor, sorry, from, move from query-based pagination to cursor-based pagination. And the amount of database reads that we were able to save had an uh, impact of multiple tons of carbon emissions that we were able to save from the planet simply due to the nature of those calls and the impact that they have. So tangible effects of what that means for your infrastructure and for your, over, your overall uptime as a platform. And also offering them Shopify perspective. It's like, OK, you want to be able to build it this way. Consider these things in a bigger picture. The second part we wanted to talk to them about was, OK, optimization. How do we ensure when we're building this program for larger merchants or larger developers that we're able to really help optimize? And this is two things. Um, the first thing is Shopify now has a versioned API. And so as a developer, you have up to a year to move up to our newest API offering. And sure, you have a year before things potentially break, but there's a lot of benefits in every single version from an efficiency perspective and from other perspectives. So we want our developers to be on the most recent version of our platform for multiple reasons. Some of it because of the efficiency that I mentioned, but other means as well. So being able to work alongside developers to make sure that they're doing what they should be doing and not just because they have to, because, oh, if I, don't, if I wait, I could wait a year, but do this in the first four months because it's going to be the most effective for you. The second part of optimization is more back-end optimization. Um, on the developer experience team, we were, we were dealing with these issues very sporadically when a partner had a problem, right? They'd come to us. I could obviously go in. I could jump into our logs. I could see what kind of requests they were making, which time frame, why were things going wrong. But there's a lot of information I didn't have, information that previously we think that maybe wasn't that important. But today, we realize that it is valuable, and we should be asking it from our developers. We today are going to be learning about our developers' tech stacks, learning about our developers' teams, and also learning about whether those development teams, are they in-house or are they being outsourced? They might not always be relevant, but it will definitely help when problems get more technical, when problems get more advanced. And it leads to the next thing here, which is opportunity. We have beta programs and we have early access programs before APIs go into the wild for partners to be able to experience that, to see what it looks like. Because we have information around what our partners' tech stacks are and how they use the different APIs that we offer, we're able to offer those early access programs to the partners that it's most relevant to, to get the most valuable feedback and to improve and iterate in a shorter period of time without wasting time trying to reach out to people that might not necessarily care about a certain beta program or anything else. And then the next thing in terms of the opportunity umbrella is when we're talking about bringing new people onto the platform. A lot of times when you're considering bringing someone over to consume your APIs or to be a part of your partner community, they want to hear, a, they want to talk to a technical voice, a technical expert. And the way that we were set up, they really didn't have that opportunity to talk to someone that could answer, OK, if I'm coming over and I'm going to be using your APIs and I'm going to be building this into my business model, what does, that look for my, what does that look like for my business and my company in the long term? How do I ensure that this is a start, smart strategic decision for me? And when you bring engineers on board and you bring a development team on board, you're able to, a lot, um, you're able to provide a lot more um, validity and trust there within that relationship. 
So three components, solutions engineering, let's help them do this better, let's help them plan it for the long term. Um, optimization, let's ensure that they're using the most cutting edge APIs, let's make sure that their apps are getting built the best way possible with our recommendations, and then opportunity, ensuring that they know that we'll be there with them throughout the process. So very much for us, this is a pilot project. This is probably launched a couple months ago. Um, we're taking a look at which partners makes the most sense to bring onto this, uh, bring onto this program. Obviously, we'll have Bold, we'll have a few others. But as this program evolves, we want to see what the feedback is like from the developer community with this more high-touch experience and high-touch interactions that they receive. The goal is that it helps them, right? So I want to talk about is this something that you need to consider? Is this something that maybe potentially you can integrate into your own developer experience programs or something maybe down the line? Is this something that's going to make sense for you? So instead of developer experience, developer experience MVP. What would those goals be? So the first goal that I think is extremely important is involvement in the product cycle. Um, before having a full-fledged experience, just knowing that bringing on these partners into your product life cycles, into your testing and explore phases, will help you have a more polished product once it actually makes it out into the real world. The second part, we like to call a uh, oh shit button, right? If we had an oh shit button that one weekend, uh, things might have been a lot different for the thousands of merchants that were relying on that app. Unfortunately, we didn't and all of those stores had issues. So is there a way right now for your partners and your developers to let you know something's wrong, it's a really big problem for me, and I need eyes on this? How can you implement that? Kind of like the, the pizza button that Tina was talking about, but uh, in terms of things going wrong. The second part, which I think is really important, which I wish we'd have done earlier as well, is better data. Having a better understanding of the overall composition of the people that are using your APIs, their teams, their tech stacks, how they plan to use it in the future, their growth as a business. This, the collecting of this data is a lot easier than actually being able to apply it and make use of it, but it is step one, and it is something that could help you down the line. And then lastly, um, improved efficiency. I talked about the example of how much carbon we're able to save um, simply by changing some people from uh, REST-based pagination to cursor-based pagination. I want to give you an example of what a complex object on Shopify looks like. So we're an e-commerce company, so our objects within our APIs have to do with orders, products, customers. A single order has many different properties and a lot of nested objects within it. So if I, all I care about, if I'm using REST and I want to get one attribute off the order object, a note, this is an example of what that looks like. This is a 40-second GIF of all the different properties that get returned to me by making a single call to a single order ID. And it scrolls for a while, right? So think about the amount of work my database has to do to be able to actually retrieve this data and overall what kind of impact that has. I don't have to preach GraphQL like I typically do at parties in this room, I think. I think we're all on the same page in terms of how amazing it is and how cool it is. But I don't think our partners and the people consuming our APIs might know that, right? We're not going to be uh, deprecating REST anytime soon. It's still the standard. But if we were to get this user to instead make a single GraphQL call that looks like that, they'd be able to get their results and no other data that's going to be irrelevant to them. So like I mentioned, this is a pilot project. What does success look like for us? What are we hoping to accomplish? Really, it's two things. The first thing is a higher standard of the apps in our app store, the 2500 plus that I was talking about. We don't um, ask for the source code of our applications, like some places like Apple might. So being able to ensure that there's a high quality within those applications, they can, um, they can be valuable to rigorous use by large merchants, that's really important. And then more importantly, it's the bi-directional relationship that you have with the people consuming your APIs. If they know that you care about them succeeding on your platform and you're able to offer that high-touch relationship, those high-touch interactions, when there's a problem they're having, you're there to listen, you're actually able to work through it with them and ensure that they're there for the long term as well, that could only speak volumes um, for everyone that's consuming your APIs. <coughs> that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs>